right, guys. Thanks a lot for following along in my series on how I'm building the F4U. Uh, today I'm going to go ahead and show you guys where I'm at with the engine build. So far I've gone through and I've put together all the little exhaust pieces here. You can see that I've got what mounts inside the cowling to the back of the engine that routes the exhausts already painted in uh, Gaia's gunmetal black. Uh, it's a metallic paint that I'm using here in Okinawa because I can't seem to acquire Alclads. Um, but it works out pretty good as you can see here. Uh, that's the metallic. It's got a nice kind of almost like a gold flake to it, which I like because it almost gives it that burnt look to it. I'm going to go through this uh, with some, I think, clear orange, some Tamiya's clear orange on the, on the bend parts of the exhaust. Uh, and just kind of highlight the edges and make it look a little bit more black. I'm going to use maybe uh, probably like a 90-10% mix. I'm going to get it really thin and just kind of shoot it down with my airbrush. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through the an actual uh, radial part of the engine. And I uh, painted this silver, star bright silver I think is what Gaia calls it, uh, number 121. Here it is right here. I can show you guys in case you're interested. It is a lacquer based metallic paint that lays down pretty smooth, but it's not buffable and it doesn't quite give that luster that you get from the Alclads. So I still haven't found one that's a substitute for it yet. I know that Paul talks a little bit about um, Mr. Hobby's buffable metals. Uh, I can source those here. Uh, I just picked up the wrong ones and what I picked up was the Super Metallics which are not buffable, uh, but I did use these in my monkey, my uh, one six scale monkey that I blew out the front tire on. I had to wait to get more parts on, so I put that on hold. Uh, but you can see here, this is a mixture of, of the dur aluminum and the aluminum and the titanium. Uh, I got some tonal variations in here. You can see on, on the, uh, I guess that's the carburetor. Uh, and you can see, on, I'm, I don't know what this is, it's the carburetor and maybe the piston uh, and the spark plug stuff, you know, I got some tonal variation there. Uh, so I was pleased with what I got. Uh, not as pleased as Outclads again, but you know, I can only do what I can do. So, uh, what I'm going to do here, like I said, is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a wash on this. I have Engine Grime by AK Interactive. It's an enamel-based um, weathering tool that they provide that I've been really happy with, as you can see up here. I've got a lot of their washes. Um, it saves me the trouble of having to go through oil paints or, or picking up enamel paints and trying to mix them. It's easy to just pick up and grab and go. So I really like the product. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a little bit of paper here just so I don't make a mess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just give this a really good shake and grab a, grab a flat brush here and a palette and some odorless thinners. Pull a little bit of this AK's odorless thinners. I'm just going to go ahead and take this right out of the right out of the jar. Now I've already prepped this with a clear coat. I used AK's glossy varnish, which I don't know. I'm not really happy with. It didn't lay down as smooth as I'd have liked. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it's not very smooth. Now I didn't thin that down at all. I sprayed it straight out of the bottle, so I'm not going to write it off yet. I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of lacquer thinner, uh, probably self-leveling, Mr. Hobby's self-leveling, and see how that works. But basically all I'm doing right now is I'm sweating my brush uh, to get it started, taking off the excess. Uh, and I'm just going to go straight to work here with with the engine gram. And you can see it really just gets down into those crevices really well. I'm using this more as a filter than I am a wash. Uh, but I think that's okay. I don't think there's rules. This is modeling. Uh, I feel free to experiment and, and 
play around. You know, I want to have fun when I'm doing this. If I've got to follow the rules, then I might as well be at work and, uh, no thank you. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this on pretty thick. Make sure I get the heads. Get down in here. Make sure it doesn't pull up anywhere too bad. I want to keep it uniform. Uh, you know, I'm going to come and take all this off when it dries anyway and just leave the recesses so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go ahead and dab it on in there. I have to say about the AK, I ordered these uh, direct from AK Interactives. Uh, because I'm in Japan, it took about two and a half months for me to get the supplies. Uh, and in, in the time between, I had sent some emails with some concerns to AK, and Carlos, the owner of AK, uh, was really quick to respond to me. He actually gave me a full refund on all the parts, no questions asked. He said, uh, you know, he was he apologized and he said the next time I wanted to order some stuff from him to let him know and he would throw in some freebies. Uh, it turns out I got the supplies anyway, so I shot him an email and let him know that I, I had received it and uh, that I was, you know, enjoying his products and appreciated it. And I told him that I would send him the money and uh, he appreciated that, I'm sure, and told me... Uh, that he could facilitate me on my next order. I want to try and get the uh, AK Air. Uh, I told him I wanted, you know, the entire line of, of the Air. So I think they call it AK Interactive's Air uh, aircraft series. I'm not sure I can't, off the top of my head what they call it. Uh, and that I wanted all the washes to accommodate it. He said it would no, no problem. Uh, that he would put something together and he would write me a quote on it. So he's been very helpful. Uh, I'm not a supplier by any means. I don't own a hobby shop. Uh, and the fact that he's willing to work with me direct and is is kind of a relief because a lot of a lot of companies won't do that. They just uh, will will uh, refer you back to their your local hobby shop and tell you to order through them. Um, so again, he's just been absolutely positive with my orders. And you can see I'm just you know going to set that aside and let it dry and keep working this in. Just kind of slapping it on there, no really rhyme or reason, just making sure I get good coverage. And you can thin this stuff way down too. Um, it goes a long way. I'm using a lot here uh, because I really want a dark effect. I want this to stand out. I figured doing it this way would be a lot easier than painting these all black and then coming through and dry brushing them. I just think this is going to give a better effect. I don't know. You guys tell me in your comments what you think. Maybe I'm jacking this up. I don't know. I'm by no means a professional. so. Backside here where I missed. So just a couple of parts in here. There you go. Clean off my brush real good. This is enamel based. I don't know if I want to take too much of this off, to be honest with you. I'm kind of happy with just take a look and see if I clean it up, what it's going to look like.
you have it, I can clean it up and really get more of a metallic finish on it. Let's see if I can get it in here. Get my white balance in. Doesn't really look quite as dramatic in real life if it does on the camera. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I think I like that a little bit better. All right. So my paint strategy here, to me, is clear orange, X26. I'm going to take a little bit of this, and I'm going to put it in my color cup with about 90% thinners. So we'll call that 90%. Give this a good mix. Make sure my paddle's clean. We'll call this 10%. Give that a good mix. Basically all I'm trying to do is give the effect of discoloration from heat. I don't know how I'm going to do this with keeping you guys in focus, but I'm going to try my damnedest. I'm just going to hold this at an angle so I can just highlight the bends. And you can see the effect that gives me is just a little bit of a tonal variation. Thank you. Now, I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera, but it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit the bend here. Call that my exhaust. The crankcase. Now this originally was supposed to be this color. This is Tamiya's X66 light gray. And I chose to end up going with a Mr. Hobby Colors um, RLM gray violet. It's a little bit darker, but I, I feel like if I did it this way, it allows me to come back with a lighter gray and kind of highlight the details a little bit because you're really going to see that as it sits in the cowling. That's going to be the probably the only part of the engine that you actually do get to see. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this. So what I'm going to do, first of all, while I've still got this wash here, I'm going to take my spindle, which I uh, painted this titanium with, I think, Gaia's titanium color. Or did I use... No, I used uh, Super Metallic by Mr. Hobby, uh, the titanium. And I don't know if you could see that. There's that kind of red in the pigment in the bottom of that. This is really a, a cool color for titanium. I don't know if you can get the color out. It probably just looks silver, but there's almost like a rusty reddish hue to it. And all I'm going to do is just get in here and the 
where you're never going to see it because the propeller is going to be on there, but, you know, <laughs> it's weather. I did it. Peace of mind. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take the crankcase and just around the edges, I'm going to put a little bit in there too, just where you're going to see on the back side of that. Clean that up. And then we'll go over and we'll dry brush this with some silver to hit those bolt heads and give it a little bit more detail. This is the fun part for me. This is what I like doing. I don't know what this piece is, but I'm going to weather it. I think it'll get dirty. So that's weathered too. Now, before I go into weathering the crankcase or the gear hub, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to grab that lighter toned gray, the XF66, if I can find it here. Here it is, light gray, Tamiya. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. Get this brush cleaned out. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of acrylic thinner and just put a dab in here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm using the stir stick basically to help facilitate the pour so I don't make a mess. And that's probably more than I need. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and suck some of that out of there. brush and grab my fine detail brush here and I'm just gonna start putting a little bit of paint in my palette and thinning it down with this thinner just because I find taking it straight out of the bottle tends to leave a lot of brush strokes So for me, this, this helps a little bit. And I'm just going to pick out some of the highlights here along with the side of my brush and I'm just going to just touch some of the areas I think are going to get some more light, get some tonal variation in there. Just along like the corners of some of these pieces. A little bit on the top side of this and see how thin I've got this paint so it's almost transparent so the object is really just to not let it pull and I'm going to blend this in with the underside and hopefully 
create just a subtle tonal variation between the top and the bottom of the crankcase here. Where I think the light would shine on it. You know, I don't know, maybe that looks stupid. Maybe I just ruined it. Maybe you guys think it looks cool. I like it. I think it looks neat. So, I'm just going to work it in, stop it from pulling up. I don't know if you can see that. It just kind of gives a little bit of a, a variation in there. And when it dries, it'll blend together pretty nicely. And that's it. So that's the crankcase. Stir this up again. And I'm just going to get... Oh, my recording device is about to die. So I'm just going to get in the recesses here. Make this stand out a little bit. I'm going to brush with the flow of the air over this. Try to keep it looking realistic, and I'm going to give this. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to give this a couple of seconds to dry, and then I'm going to work it again with a little bit of clean thinners, and try and pull some of this off, so I get a little bit of a streaking effect. And I'm just going to work this back like so. And you see how it starts to develop these streaks? And you can pull it both directions as long as you stay with the flow of direction. So forward and backwards. <clears throat> right. You can see how I'm coming along here. You know, I'm starting to really get this weathered, worn, greasy, grimy effect. Now this is engine grime. We also have an oil, which I'm going to come after this and do it again. Okay, so I'm just going to work along the edges of that and just Blend them in. got a little bit of a streak here. I'm just going to work the edge of that and pull it in. Right. You got to be patient. You got to take your time because it's real easy to blow all of this out. And lose all your work. So you can see that's about where I'm going to stop this. It's not overdone, it's just a little couple of streaks here and there. Right? I'm going to take this engine oil. I'm just going to put a little bit. Palette. 
this stuff is going to look wet, 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 wet. It's not going to dry to a uh, matte finish. I've got my thinners. I'm going to moisten the brush here and just thin this down a little bit. So I'm just going to really work this gear sh crankshaft just a little bit. Maybe in a couple of spots a little bit thicker so I can make a streak out of it later. Uh, here. Yeah. Good. We'll clean this off. I'm going to take this finer brush and I'm just going to pull this down. Just gonna pull it down. see there just some grease just a little bit of grease off the side of that and do the same thing right here if I can keep it in shot for you just moisten my brush and I'm just gonna pull there we go. I'm just gonna pull right through the middle of this just to humidify that whole streak I'm gonna bring it together I'm just going to start working it together and then try not to blow it out, which it looks like I did. My brush was a little bit too moist. So. so around the edges, I'm just going to clean that off. And see what I'm left with. You know? Focus here, camera. Thank you. It's a greasy, grammy crate case.